Hi, Scott Hi. Orland with Cinema Magazine. I'm here in New York, and it is my pleasure to be talking to an incredibly talented actor, Rosamund Pike, for the movie I, Gone Girl. Thank you. That's a nice introduction. Well, it's well deserved. <laughs> it's well deserved. I am fascinated by this type of character, and I can only fathom as an actor how delicious it must have been to kind of inhabit her. We have to be very careful about what we can say and what we can't say because there are That's little true. twists yes. and turns. But what did you find intriguing about Amy? Well, I think she is um, a girl who's very hard to get a read on, and that's because she's got a very fragile sense of core self. But he's, you know, coming from the fact that she was a little girl whose parents created a fictional twin for her in the guise of their book series with this character, Amazing Amy. So it's two parents who take their daughter and say, honey, we're going to make you into a book character, but we're going to make you better than you really are, prettier than you really are, more successful than you really are. And I know you gave up, you know, volleyball age 10, but this girl's going to make varsity, you know. So it's like this, this twin who's, who just is, supersedes you in every way. And I think that's a recipe for narcissism. And nar not the narcissists in this world are, you know, it's not necessarily what people think it's it's you you need that image of how you'd like to be seen reflected back at you from all angles What's and it's too is, is David uh, has talked about one of the reasons that he was attracted to you not mm. only with your talent but that when he found out that you were an only child he thought yeah. you would understand that there was something about you that would separate you from the other people about Amy. so it's being socialized with adults it's the it's the it's the kid who's been around adult conversation and has a you know perhaps less playful uh, that's probably why I became an actor, so I get to sort of, you know, <laughs> play more later in life. But, um, yes, Amy's got that sort of otherness and that, you know, singularity. And it's why some people say, well, has the book got a feminist agenda? And I said, well, it might if Amy wasn't so selfish. You know, she's, she's not really out for anybody other than herself. You know, she's, she's, she's the only child who goes and does things all by herself. It's fascinating to have you read the book and now gone through the experience with the movie. When I talk to my colleagues, mm. there's such a difference between what men perceive oh, or is get there? out of it and what women get out of okay. it. Okay. And I was just explain <laughs> that I think that, you know, sometimes men like again, I have to be really careful how I dance around this, that men feel a little more scorned in a sense than maybe women do. There's a, a little more of a an empathy factor that maybe women mm. have that maybe men don't. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering what type of dialogue does a movie like this there's definitely a water cooler conversation. It is. It's because there's no winner, as it as it were. You know, there's not a, you know, it's not a moral tale where a hero comes through and saves the day. It's a, it leaves you much more unsettled. It's it's a look at the sort of, you know, stripping bare of a marriage. And is is a marriage after you've, you know, do, what is a real marriage? Is it is it, is it on some level sort of truth? And with that truth comes pain. Um, or is it, you know, always a performance? It's it, They're hard questions. And I guess men and women do take things differently. Um, I think, but they, maybe they identify with both characters at certain points. I mean, there are certain men who I've spoken to who said I kind of identified with Amy at some points. Interesting. Are you a diary type person? Do you like to kind of keep track? Oh, I wish. No, I wish I was. I mean, I always, you know, especially on this movie, you know, day by day, it was so interesting, and so many things came out, and I thought, I must record all this, and occasionally there are days that I've got notes, but the bulk of it, no. Have you ever been, I mean, one of the fascinating parts of the book is that Amy really, through a discourse of unfortunate events, has to move with her husband to an environment that she's really not yes. adept in. Has there ever been a moment like that for you, where you've had to move <laughs> somewhere, where you're like, oh, wow, this is not kind of where I want to be? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because also with personality types, you know, the person in New York who is just, you know, ambitious and go-getting and that's totally normal, you put that person in Missouri, as happens to Amy, and suddenly she's uppity and, you know, uh, you know, aloof and, and competitive in a bad way. And it's the same thing that's positive in New York is, might be a negative somewhere else. Um, I mean, I always feel a bit like I've been uprooted from my soul when I have to spend time in L.A. You know, I feel... I feel like a real alien there, which probably also helped with playing Amy, actually, because, you know, Amy has got that sort of, you know, hothouse flower out of, out of the incubator feel about her. Speaking of incubators, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Looked, thank I'm you. Sure, you know, baby number two, congratulations. Baby number two, yes, coming in November. It's a good, good, good after this film to make a human being, I think, <laughs> after I've created someone who, you know, 
is uh, not going to be liked by perhaps everybody. But a brilliant performance. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much.